Welcome back, sleepyheads, and thanks for tuning in to another episode of Sleepy Aliens Perspective. So tonight I want to talk about the social and spiritual dangers of the new body image that Kim Kardashian is promoting to the public. So Kim has allegedly lost over 21 pounds, and I've seen some photos. And whether, you know, she's had some fat sucked out or whatever it may be, this new body image that she's promoting is also at the same time promoting body dysmorphia. And because Kim has such a huge following and she is a social figure, a celebrity, you know, she's not responsible for other people's health, but she is responsible, you know, in the basic sense that she has influence and to be a positive leader. And what does that mean, right? So this sudden weight loss is a surprise because, you know, if we go back once upon a time in Kim's history, back to 2007 when Kim is 27 years old, not only was she coming out as, you know, a buzzing and passionate entrepreneur, but Kim was also modeling for bongo jeans. She did this interview where she talked about what it was like to be a curvier woman and how it was hard to find jeans and clothes that she likes. And of course, everybody has the right to do whatever they want to their body. But again, taking some level of social responsibility here, right? So there was a point where Kim genuinely wanted to promote curvy figures in society. And when she got her BBL, despite that being, you know, plastic surgery, I think we can also acknowledge the fact that for, you know, um, the Latino race or black people, Kim did standardize a curvy figure in a role that was still very much stuck on skinny, right? And so if you think about Latinos and blacks, and that standardized of curvy figures, it normalized it to the point where they, black and Latinos who, you know, had bigger bodies, they were being seen as beautiful by the general public and as desirable and as attractive. So in many ways, Kim really did succeed in her goal to normalize curvy figures. But, you know, let's fast forward to 15, late, 15 years later, you know, Kim is 42 years old and now we see her, you know, pale face, blonde hair, you know, and she's lost all this weight and her BBL is gone. And she's now telling us that this is the new form of beauty. <laughs> this new body image of hers not only promotes an extremely toxic and unhealthy disorder that is not only an American problem, but it's a worldwide problem, of course. But she's promoting, you know, body dysmorphia and changing your body to fit a different standard. I mean, there's one thing, like if a celebrity wants to change up their style or their hair, I feel like that's one thing entirely different. But Kim becoming, you know, super skinny, skinny waist, her skin looks paler and she has bleached blonde hair now. I feel like she's trying to send a different message. And because I wanna just analyze this a little bit deeper, let's remember the fact that Kim gained social attention when she was a stylist working for Paris Hilton. And if you think about the fact that during that period of her life, not only did Kim have to work, but her family wasn't as wealthy. And Kim grew up in this California, LA environment where you're constantly bombarded with wealth and how to attain it and who has it and who doesn't. So I think being in that role created a insecurity complex. And around the time Kim was working for Paris, she was at least 21 years old. So think about the fact that Kim is trying to make her way and she's around this tall, American, beautiful, blonde girl who was born into massive wealth. And that's all she's ever known. So I think that relationship breeded, it sort of enhanced that insecurity complex. 
it's sort of um, seeded that body dysmorphia that we have all been witness to for the past 15 years. Because at that point, Kim had her regular body. She was the same. But now, now that she's lost, well, she's taken out her butt implants. That was something she did in addition to this weight loss. She took out her butt implants, you know? And I think she did say it was just for like health reasons and all that, which is awesome because, you know, if you think about it, those implants are not meant to be living in a person's body for, you know, decades at a time. It's just not healthy and those chemicals alter and they leak and they create toxicities within the body. But if you think about the fact that she spent so many years promoting a curvier figure and that form of self-love. And now we have this sudden change where she's super skinny and she's blonde. It's almost like a part of her has become a version of Paris Hilton because now Kim is super rich. And I don't know about Paris Hilton's Instagram, but Kim has over 329 million Instagram followers. So I think a part of her has always wanted to be like Paris and live like Paris. And maybe when she lost the BBL, a part of her thought, well, what am I going to do with my body now? How will I have that social favorability? How will I continue to build my following and build my wealth? How will people like me? You know, so I think there's some weird complex she has where she is still comparing herself to that upper level social class that she was never truly born into, but was surrounded by and she idealized. But I also want to get into some general symptoms of body dysmorphia. And I don't know if Kim has, you know, ever said publicly she has body dysmorphia but at this point we can all agree if you feel the need to change your body such dr so drastically you know especially in a time period of like 15 years and none of it's completely natural there's tons of plastic surgery and other physical enhancements and a heavy reliance on makeup and styling i think that says a lot because Kim is 42 years old now, and I don't know, I am 31, and when I turned 30, I was in this phase where I was like, well, wow, I truly do love my body, but it seems like Kim still hasn't had that moment for herself, and I'm not saying that I am, like, completely perfect and I love everything about my body, but every day, you know, I look in the mirror and I say, I am beautiful, and I accept these flaws that I have. And I'm going to trust that I look the way I do for a reason. You know, I'm, you know, I think we truly do. We are born the way we are for a reason. And yeah, I'm not saying people can't get plastic surgery, but I'm saying don't alter your self image to a degree where you look in the mirror one day and you can't remember the, what you looked like, you know, 20 years ago or 10 years ago. You know, aside from general aging, you know, if you've made that many alterations to your vessel, you know, I think that creates a huge form of dissociation from your true self, your higher self. And that's just something to keep in mind spiritually. But um, some symptoms of body dysmorphia are an obsession with mirrors. So, I mean, I don't follow Kim on Instagram, but I've seen enough like interview things that have popped up about her or just general photos that'll pop up if I'm like in line at the grocery store. And Kim does love mirror selfies. Um, they also suffer with social anxiety. So Kim may not express that she has a lot of social anxiety, but if she relies so much on her appearance and her makeup and her styling, it becomes a mask so that not only do we not get to the root of her authentic self but you know we are so focused on her looks that uh, the things that she says and does it becomes less relevant even though it shouldn't be right so they also suffer from thoughts of self-harm and the self-harm rates are extremely high in the body dysmorphia disorder community and body dysmorphia is 
an obsessive compulsive disorder because these people are obsessed with their flaws, picking them out, changing them, fixing them. These people will spend hours styling and putting on makeup and just spending that time in the mirror to feel like they look better and love themselves a bit more. So um, they also seek a lot of social reassurance and the unfortunate thing about um, being a public figure or a celebrity at that is that you do need social favorability. You do need people to follow you and like you. But if you get to the point where you feel like your body is no longer accepted by the public and you have to change that to gain reassurance, likes, follows, and support, that's a whole different level. And if you have to constantly post thirst trap photos on your social media account to, you know, gain that social favorability, that says a lot about how reliant you are on public opinion. And that is a dangerous thing because the public court is vicious and they will drop you at any second, let's be real. And that's why you really have to have that backbone and that belief and that self-acceptance in yourself. And um, lastly, a lot of people with body dysmorphia compare themselves to others. And so like I was saying, when Kim was 21, when she had that early development of that insecurity and when she was working for Paris, I think she compared herself to Paris a lot. And a part of her probably made some subconscious or maybe it was fully conscious and she made this promise to not only be better, but achieve more and look better and have more followers because she thought she was worthy too, but not as the person she was. She felt like she had to become somebody else to gain that. And she had to become somebody that was better and more different than Paris in a way. So spiritually, what is important about this issue is that Kim is promoting a lack of self-acceptance. And if you know anything about Buddhism or just the spiritual community in general and the teachings that many people preach, self-acceptance is the key to enlightenment. And really you need self-awareness, self-acceptance, and self-love to truly be able to see the world for what it is to accept yourself the way you are and to live in true peace and to be able to extend that energy out to the world. So if you think about self-awareness, what is that? That is your beliefs, thoughts, and how you act on a daily basis. And if you think about Kim having those 329 million followers, She's not really promoting a lot of self-awareness in that situation because despite the fact that she is not responsible for another person's health, she is, ugh, I don't even like to say this about her, but she is in a leadership position in that manner where she has to acknowledge and have self-awareness of what she does and the positive and the negative influence that can have on people. And so I don't think she has achieved self-awareness yet. And if we think about self-acceptance, not only do you accept your body the way it is, but you accept your personality, your wants, your needs, those desires that you have. You accept that as you are. And if we think back to that Kim in 2007, she was a really passionate entrepreneur and she accepted her curves and her body as the way that she was. But, you know, I don't know what the tabloids may have been saying about her at that time, but maybe she felt a need early on to start changing her body because she was already getting such negative commentary from the public. And lastly, we think about self-love. And so self-love is that unconditional love for yourself. It's non-contingent. It doesn't need an alteration of the body. It doesn't need a certain level of success. That self-worth is undeniable, untainted and it is unconditional. And if we think about the fact that, you know, at 42 years of age, when a woman has wisdom, this is when you see many women like teaching younger women 
about self-acceptance and when they came into their own and when they stopped giving a shit what other people thought, it doesn't seem like Kim has reached that level yet. And that is unfortunately very sad. But I also want to talk about the fact that how you achieve outside beauty and how that actually works. So, um, you know, even me, I did not always, you know, look this toned and my skin wasn't always very clear or fit. You know, I've had a very long journey with changing things in my diet and being more aware of my thoughts and feelings and healing a lot of my trauma. And so when you heal the inner darkness in your body, I mean, I don't want to sound cliche and I don't want to sound like I'm talking about some lame ass magic trick here, but when you heal the darkness in you, those negative beliefs and thoughts and perceptions and those bad habits that you have, it really does start to change your physical body because a lot of the things that have like become more symmetrical and the way my skin's cleared up, that only happened when I really got deep into my healing journey and when I began speaking my truth and, you know, talking about my traumas and um, being okay with who I was and accepting my life for the way it's been and all the things that I've experienced. So the more I did all of that, the more my skin cleared, you know, and I'm telling you, my face became more symmetrical and toned. And I'll have to do an episode about this, but I need to research more into the history of like Kundalini awakening and all of that stuff because I tell you, my spine has been naturally correcting itself for the past six years. And this has been a, when I like really got deep into like healing some heavy traumas that I experienced. And when it started, it started at the base of uh, my spine and it was excruciating. And I tell you, this has been going on for the past six years. It's worked its way all the way up to like being near my cerebellum now. And I still am like cracking my shoulders every day, but everything's become more aligned. My posture has naturally gotten better. That's because I was growing that spiritual backbone that's needed for self-acceptance and self-love and self-awareness, right? I've d I was developing all of those things naturally. So my body has changed. The way I walk has changed, but I didn't intentionally like think like, okay, I wanna look more symmetrical, I, you know? That was not intentional. It came naturally because I was healing on the inside and so my body started changing naturally on the outside. So I really wanna reiterate that that is the path to true beauty, healing the inside and your face and all of the glow and you know that glow that people talk about, you know, it, it won't need any makeup. You won't need plastic surgery. It'll happen naturally. But um, that is all that I really wanted to say about this situation, but I really want people to be aware and I want anybody who does follow Kim Kardashian or is a diehard fan to acknowledge the fact that you are following someone who does not fully accept themselves. And she is still relying on the public to achieve self-acceptance and a sense of self-love and self-worth. And before you go obsessing about going to the gym or doing more waist training things, I don't know, those fucking corset things that people wear, like, I don't know how they do that because I can barely wear a sports bra for very long because I feel like sports bras will suffocate me. <laughs> I like I don't get how women do that. But before you go making any drastic alterations to your body, focus on healing what needs to be healed within. Focus on that internal darkness. Focus on your self-love, self-awareness, and self-acceptance. That is the key to your enlightenment. That is the key to your glow up. And no, it may not happen you know, overnight, like I said, it took me like six years of my body slowly and steadily changing for me to see, like, for me to look the way that I look now, right? And um, I think the most beautiful part is that, you know, 
you get to experience the journey of that growth, you know? Um, and even if I like look at old pictures of myself, I looked older when I was younger, but I look younger now. It's crazy. Um, but I'm being so serious when I say that that is really how you achieve true beauty. Like God will give you a spiritual <laughs> glow up. And like when you get that uh, spiritual plastic or spiritual, I don't know the word for it. I have to think of like, it's not plastic surgery, but it's like a spiritual physical enhancement that happens when you heal. It's almost like, um, I don't know if you guys have ever seen like any episodes of intervention and you see like the person before and like they're doing the heavy drugs and they look tired, they look dirty, they look like shit, like their skin is really bad. But then you see them after they get out of rehab like five months later and they look like just like a newborn glowing skin. Like you, you don't see any more of those patches or their marks. Like their skin has literally like regenerated itself. Like that is what I believe happens to spiritually when you heal trauma, like something in you regenerates and you know, your cells like realign in a way that, you know, promotes true beauty without, you know, going through the route of, you know, plastic surgery or different cosmetic procedures. So that's something to think about. Um, be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, donate to this channel, and let me know too if you guys have seen any of those intervention episodes, because I swear that it's like, I would see that and I'd be like, what the fuck? Like, how do they look? They look like they, they look way more beautiful, you know, even than you would assume they would if they had just naturally healed. Like, they look like a completely different person. And I think it's just the body's way of blessing you from clearing out all of those toxic, you know, toxins in general, chemical toxins, but also spiritual and emotional toxins that build up in the body and cause diseases, disorders, and, you know, and just unhealthy skin and all of those things, you know, um, just something to think about. But have a good night, sleepyheads. I hope you've enjoyed this episode and be mindful of who you follow and who you take advice from and who you model your own beauty standards after, okay? Because it should only be you. Have a good night. <laughs>